Hello, and thanks for taking the time to hear my presentation about international health insurance. My name is James Guzman, and while many of you already know me, I will go over a little bit about myself for those that do not. I was born in San Diego, California in 1983, but moved to the East Coast and grew up between Charlotte, North Carolina and Virginia Beach, while also spending my summers with my grandmother in Puerto Rico. Once I graduated high school, I decided to join the Navy. I went to boot camp in 2004 and was then stationed on board USS Bataan, during which time we took part in Operation Enduring Freedom in Iraq and Hurricane Katrina Relief. I got out of the Navy and in 2010, I decided to move abroad to study international business in Madrid, Spain. During this time, I was able to travel all around Europe. Then after graduation, I have been able to travel and lived all over the Caribbean, Latin America, and finally have settled in San Miguel de Allende in central Mexico. Right now, I help people bring more freedom into their lives by thinking internationally, and I have helped many, many people move abroad, mostly to Mexico. The details of health insurance varies greatly throughout the world, and this information will be admittedly biased towards a U.S. to Mexico experience. Even if that is not your situation, this information could be valuable for you. So please stick with me and remember to speak with a broker about your specific situation to get the right long-term health care strategy for you. So whether you're just planning now or have already taken the leap, I congratulate you on embracing a more borderless existence. This will give you many more options and has the potential to greatly improve your life in many ways. This is an exciting transition and there are many things to think about such as housing, immigration, paperwork, taxes, and banking. But one thing that many people forget to think about is healthcare. Most people think that everything abroad is cheap, so healthcare must also be cheap and I'll just deal with it if anything happens. Uh, this is not a good strategy and you could be putting yourself, your family, and your assets at risk. And during this presentation, I will explain to you why exactly that is. In Mexico and many other places around the world, they have parallel private and public health care systems. What you see here are pictures of the public hospitals. Now the public system is not an insurance plan, but a social plan that is for citizens that cannot afford anything else. It is not meant to be a safety net for foreigners. As you can see on the left of the screen, this is what a waiting room normally looks like. COVID has certainly not helped the situation, but these hospitals normally operate at or near capacity. As you can see from the picture on the bottom left, this is before COVID and the top left is after. Normally the beds are set up in a big room with curtains between each bed while they can have a lot of patients at a time and they bring them in and out and treat them all times of night and day. The bottom line is that they are underfunded and many times have shortages of basic supplies. You may need to provide your own things like bandages and bed sheets for instance. I would highly, highly suggest that you do what you can to not end up here. Many times you can end up worse coming out through misdiagnosis, mistreatment, contamination, and that kind of thing. These are pictures of a private hospital facility. On the bottom left, you will see what a typical room looks like. They have private rooms and usually have translators on staff as well for those that need them. They do have top of the line staff and equipment, but this comes at a cost. Most of the great equipment that you see here is imported and is expensive. Also, the equipment that they need to use on you can greatly increase the cost. For instance, these heart stents in Mexico cost around $9,000 US each. We have had people need three in a hurry, which cost $27,000 only for the stents themselves, not including everything else involved with the procedure. Here's an actual report of claims from one of the companies that I work with uh, these are all claims from just one year. For chronic issues, these kinds of bills can last for several years. So as you can see, although things seem to be much cheaper abroad, hospital bills can still rack up very quickly. So as I said earlier, even if you do have enough money to self-insure against these kinds of things, it is still not a good financial decision to risk that kind of downside instead of just paying a normal premium. This is why even the richest people in the world carry lots of insurance. These are for-profit hospitals and have no obligation to treat you. When you arrive, they will ask you how you intend to pay. Cash, credit, Visa, American Express, MasterCard, your house, your land, co-signature, bank wire, if you have a friend to co-sign, loans, kids, relatives, community. If you cannot show them proof of funds 
or an insurance policy, they will simply kick you out. What is great about many of the health insurance plans is that they already have a relationship with the major hospitals and will set up payment directly with them. Once the hospital sees that you're covered, you don't need to worry about anything else. So now that I've explained how that works, I want to emphasize that many things are less expensive abroad. There are many great doctors that will easily work with you and even give you their cell phone numbers in case of emergency. Most things you should be able to pay for out of pocket, and there is really no reason to get insurance involved. Here are some prices in Mexico for common medical procedures. These are priced in U.S. dollars. Okay, so now let's talk about health insurance strategy. Many people think that it's perfectly fine to live on travel or short-term health insurance. This is not a good idea. Travel insurance is meant to be used for a short period of time, usually six months or less, for emergencies while outside your country of residence. Not for ongoing treatment. It is very easy to get because there is no underwriting when you apply. If you are not familiar with underwriting, it's when the company reviews your medical history to see what they are and are not willing to cover. Since there is no initial underwriting, that means that it is done at the time of the claim. So in essence, you cannot be sure what will be covered until you file a claim. Probably the biggest downside of travel insurance is that every time you renew your policy, you are starting from scratch and any condition that you develop will become pre-existing, meaning long-term problems you have will not be covered. So as I mentioned before, short-term insurance is to be used when outside the place where you have long-term coverage. Now let's talk about long-term coverage. Long-term policies are guaranteed renewable and meant to be kept for life. This means that once you apply and pass underwriting, they must stand by their offer for as long as you continue to pay the premium. It doesn't matter what kind of conditions you develop, they cannot deny you coverage. These are major medical plans that will cover emergencies and ongoing care. So you want to start by making sure that you have long-term coverage somewhere in the world. If you are only traveling and already have long-term coverage somewhere that you would mind returning to, then you probably only need travel insurance. If you don't have long-term coverage anywhere, you will need to first get that covered. For a long-term policy, you will first have to disclose the country where you are a resident. There's a variety of variables that makes the expat demographic less expensive to insure. So you can just add that to the list of things that's great about being an expat. To be categorized as an expat, you have to live outside your home country of origin for more than six months out of the year. If you are already an expat, then you probably already have a place abroad that you're a resident. If you are a digital nomad, however, this question might be a little bit trickier. You will need to decide on one place that you consider to be your residence, and each company has different criteria for what they require to prove that. Your residence will determine the price of your policy, and if you need anything scheduled or outpatient procedures done, the company will usually expect you to get it done there. If you really don't have a place that you consider to be a resident, you can put where you currently have an address and it can be updated later with the insurer. You will then need to think about a deductible that you want to choose. There are deductibles as low as $500 and as high as $50,000. And the higher the deductible, the lower your premium will be. Many of the plans waive deductibles for accidents, births, and traveling outside your home country. If you are planning on having children, it is especially important to get long-term coverage as soon as possible because most insurance policies have a 10 to 12 month waiting period for maternity benefits. Paying for the birth itself makes the purchase a no-brainer, but additionally, maternity complications are covered as well as any condition diagnosed to the baby within the first 90 days of birth. The child is then automatically added to the policy. As a financial strategy, many people try to go with the highest deductible that they have liquid, cash, or credit. This will give you the highest quality policy at the least expensive rate. And remember, even with a high deductible, emergencies and maternity benefits may be covered. And after the first year, you will normally get what's called wellness benefits, which are basically an allowance for routine checkups. Once you have your long-term policy coverage in place, you can think about travel insurance when outside your country of residence. Some long-term policies come with travel insurance coverage and some don't. 
So that is the basics of healthcare insurance for expats and digital nomads. This is very general information, so you'll need to speak with an insurance professional to get the plan for your situation. Obviously, the best plan is to be healthy and hope not to need to go to the hospital at all. But just hoping is not a good plan. Again, I want to congratulate you on your decision to move past your own borders for a better life. This has the potential to be a new, incredible chapter of your life. But don't overlook this one part of your plan which could turn that chapter into a nightmare. I like to tell people don't be the next GoFundMe because we see crowdfunding campaigns all the time for expats who rack up hospital bills while abroad and are unable to pay them. I'm sure many of you have family and friends that think you are crazy for moving abroad. Now think of something were to happen to you and you had to turn around and ask them for money. You don't want your family, friends to have to max out their credit cards, take out a second mortgage, or use their education funds knowing that you could probably never pay them back because you have been irresponsible or thought that you couldn't afford to pay for even basic coverage. So that's it. Thanks for listening. I hope that you have learned something from this presentation and at least got you thinking about the topic. I would be happy to help you if you would like to explore your options. You can go to borderlesshealthinsurance.com and schedule a consultation there or write me at info at borderlesshealthinsurance.com. Thanks for your time and I hope to talk to you soon.